About a year ago, I sold my Toyota 4Runner SR5, a car I absolutely loved. I mean, I was crossing goddamn rivers. And as a replacement, I picked up a 2016 Subaru Crosstrek XV, a car that I've now owned for about 8-9 months. Sadly, I'm, I'm selling it too. And why you ask? Is it because I don't like it? Is it because I want a, a better car, a better ride? Well, to be honest, the only car I could replace my Crosstrek with is another Crosstrek, baby. All right, guys, so we're setting off the Crosstrek and already we're gonna be able to test the symmetrical all-wheel drive Subaru system and just like as I expected, flawless. So I purchased this Subaru Crosstrek about eight or nine months ago, about March, February. I sold my Toyota 4Runner, I had a 2014 Toyota 4Runner SR5, which I sold for this car. Uh, the reason why I did that is because I was purchasing a home. She's slow. She's slow, but she, but she gets there. So I was purchasing a home, you know, I wanted more equity down on my house. So I sold the Crosstrek and quote unquote downgraded to the Subaru Crosstrek. Now, whether I actually believe that was a, you know, quote unquote downgrade, you know, that's up for interpretation. Now, obviously the, the 4Runner is much larger, it's a bit more practical because of the space, and it's obviously, you know, much better off-roading. My girlfriend and I are a lifestyle. I think like, the, I think the Crosstrek is very much a lifestyle vehicle. If you're someone who's active, you know, going to the mountains, I live here in Canada, I live right by the Rocky Mountains. You know, if you're going to the mountains, you're doing this stuff. This car is just one of the best options you can choose. Because, you know, the other cars in this class range, or I guess in this class, are kind of smaller, and I would say they would have to be all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicles. And so the other cars in this category, I would say, would be cars like the Kona, all-wheel drive, uh, maybe the Kicks, all-wheel drive now. We got like the HRV, and some of these smaller sized SUVs, because the thing about the Crosstrek, it's a crossover. It's not large, but it's not small. It's in that kind of, you know, people would say it's kind of the awkward area, but for my personal needs, it's actually kind of, kind of the sweet spot. Because this car is very well-rounded. So because you're not buying a large SUV, you know, it's, it's, it comes at a good price tag. I purchased this one used for about 17,000. I think they're going, and this is Canadian dollars, keep in mind, and they're going for around 20, I would say, after the inflation because of the pandemic. Um, and for that value, you're getting a great car, you know. You have some safety, well you have backup cam. Again, this is a 2016 Subaru Crosstrek, so it's kind of in those awkward years of, you know, vehicles. It's right before the transition to where all the cars came with safety st uh, features standard, but it does come well equipped, you know, well equipped, I guess. The backup cam, you have heated seats, you have the four-wheel drive monitor, I guess the all-wheel drive monitoring system, which I think is really cool. I think that's honestly my favorite part of the system. I like the ability how you can see where, what all four wheels, all of your wheels are doing. It's awesome. It's a really nice touch. And of course you have Bluetooth, the Super Starlink system. Um, you could have added navigation at the time. This one doesn't, I, I don't care, I use my phone anyways. And you also have the nice screen and gauge cluster here. But other than that, you know, there's not much. Other than that, it's kind of just a utility vehicle that has some nice features. Um, and of course, Subaru all-wheel drive, which again is the biggest buying point or selling, the, selling point, however you want to look at it, in my opinion, because it's a fantastic system. So again, I came from a, from a to Toyota 4Runner, and this car has been just embarrassing that 4Runner when it comes to winter driving. Now, not off-roading, but just general winter driving, the Subaru systems are just fantastic. But as for the interior, you know, the seats, they're not good, but they're not bad. So I've heard some people say they're decent, but I actually disagree. Um, I've, I've, driven this, I've driven this car across all of Canada. I drove to Ontario from Alberta. It was about a 20 hour drive. And so I really got to know whether these seats were good or, or not. And overall, they are average at best. And they, you know, in your daily commute, they're fine. 
but on long drives you might start getting sore and you just stretch after you know four or five hours but you know no complaints for me uh, they are heated they have a nice heated system so that's nice other than that you know we got you know it, it looks like a nice area it, it feels it looks like a nice area now they don't use the best materials everywhere but just from face value you got the screen you got the double screen you got the you got that climate control system displayed on the screen you got the nice gauge cluster i really like the steering wheel actually i really like it you know if it was other wraps that'd be better but overall the interior the interior quality and just layout is really solid and it has all your bases again it doesn't have the safety features of the modern vehicle you buy today it doesn't but it does have all-wheel drive the Subaru all-wheel drive which I feel like I'm a salesman for saying this but in my opinion the Subaru all-wheel drive system to this car is the best safety feature it actually offers because it is that good and yeah so I bought this car as kind of like an in-between car when I was sold my house sold my forerunner sorry sold my foreigner bought my house and I have not been disappointed whatsoever it's you got space in the back I'll cut to some shots where maybe I'm talking about the headroom and I guess legroom yeah, so I'm about 5'10", and if I kind of sit up straight, I got a couple inches left. And if I lean, obviously, I can make that two or four inches. Here's the leg space, and I have a couple inches of leg room. Um, it's pretty comfortable. You know, nothing bad here. We got nothing back here. Nothing really for the back passengers besides, you know, the window up and lock. But, and you got that pocket right there. You can fit like a water bottle or a drink in. Other than that, though, there's not much back here, but it is good for the value you have the four doors you have the ground clearance because these guys i'm pretty sure the 2016 is 8.7 inches of ground clearance which not many people actually realize this but that is more ground clearance than even like a toyota rav4 and even some of the other bigger suvs so this thing can handle it and that's why this car specifically is a bit better off-roading than even you know a rav4 surprisingly not a lot of people know that but it's true but other than that, you know, this car has everything. It's so well-rounded, so well-rounded. It can be such a good daily driver. It is a little bit stiffer because it can go off-roading because of the off-roading nature. It is a bit stiffer. So if you're looking for a car that's gonna soak up all the bumps and you're not gonna feel any bumps, this probably isn't the car for you, but if you want like a mediocre car that is capable, it's the car. And honestly, the best way I would summarize my, I guess, ownership experience and who I would think should buy this car are active people so i'm not saying you're in the mountains every weekend but if you do want to have a car that is capable to go to the mountains or whatever you want to do to the sand whatever snow it's a great car that can do everything if you're looking just for like a comfortable commuter car you know there's maybe some better options out there but if you're an active person you're always on the go this is such a good car and it's such a good car, I'm actually buying a 2022 Crosstrek with my girlfriend. We're actually consolidating cars. Um, and this car, you know, I didn't, I think, I, I knew I was going to like it, but I actually ended up loving it. Uh, during the past nine months, it's treated me so well. The Subaru platform, uh, specifically, I think after 2014, 2015, have been very reliable. My car hasn't had a single issue in its entire uh, 96,000 kilometers of existence not a single issue I haven't had a single issue so it's reliable all-wheel drive and it's actually pretty good on gas it's pretty decent um, I would say it's really good considering it does have all-wheel drive because I think like in terms of miles per gallon I don't even know Canadian Canada's conversion uh, just a miles per, per gallon it's it's right around 30 combined 29 30 combined whereas my forerunner was at like 16 17 miles per gallon so just horrible so considering this is all-wheel drive 24-7, the fuel mileage is great. And the best part about it, again, is the all-wheel drive system. So the transmission in this guy, it does have a CVT, I know. You can opt for a five-speed manual if you choose to do so. The CVT in this car, CVT in this car is actually, it's all right. Um, I, I would prefer a six-speed and or automatic or whatever, but for it being a CVT, it's actually not the worst thing I've driven. I've gotten used to it. It's fine. The power in this car, it has around 148 horsepower, 150, I think, 152 the new two-liter engines are quoted at. Um, the power has been all right. 
So I've heard a lot of people say, and yes, I, I am actually going to upgrade to the new 2.5 liter in the new Crosstrek. But the 2 liter in this one is the same one that there's, it's sold, that's still being sold today. A lot of people say it's slow, it's a little bit tired. However, I think it's alright. Uh, the all-wheel drive system and the throttle response mapping they did for this car makes it feel really peppy, so that's a good thing. Uh, so even though it is lacking power, if you're just driving it day to day and you're not doing a lot of highway passing or highway passes or you know, you're, you're not trying to race a, a Subaru on the high, uh, WRX on the highway, the, the power is fine. Honestly, for most people who are going to buy this car, they're not even going to notice. It's, it's completely adequate. And my car also does have a Yakima roof rack, which is pretty noisy, I'm not going to lie. Um, to me, it's totally worth it because I love the look of just that aggressive front-facing Yakima uh, faceplate. But it does make some noise and it does attribute to this car being a little bit loud when you drive it. If you don't have a roof rack or anything, it's, it's it, this car is on the louder side, but it's not terrible. The braking in this car is adequate, just fine. You're not really gonna have any issues. The overall performance, and, and just again, guys, this car is, guys and girls, this car is such a well-rounded car. It has the practicality, it has the reliability, the fuel efficiency, and it also has the ability to be versatile and go in the mountains. You know, if you live in a winter climate, it's a great car. So summing up, my one year of approximate ownership has been fantastic. No issues across the board. It surprised me, it's met all my expectations. And honestly, again, the one person I think th this car suits the most are the younger people who are active. You can get these cars for a great value. They hold their price, they hold their value. You're not gonna lose much money if you, if you purchase these guys. I even see like three, four year old cross treks going for the same if not more than they cost brand new, which makes no sense. And yeah, so if you're an active person, you know, you, you maybe live in a winter climate, this car is for you and you want the practicality, reliability, and you don't need a massive SUV to haul around, you know, six kids to soccer practice. This car is for you. It's made me very happy and I'm so excited to get the Subaru Crosstrek, I guess the new one. I'm not going to tell any more details, I'm pretty pumped on it. I actually just finalized some of the papers today. So we got a Crosstrek coming and it's going to be exciting. And yeah guys, so more videos on the way. Um, I will leak one bit of information. I am planning on actually doing like an overland build with the new Crosstrek. I, I've just been I've been getting really into like camper conversions and just you know being creative with you know building and so that's the future plans I guess. But thanks for watching guys and girls and if you have any questions let me know.